when it comes to patients with cardiac implantable electronic devices such as permanent pacemaker or AICD that is artificial implantable cardioverter defibrillator or CRTs that is cardiac resynchronization therapy devices there are quite a few points we need to remember in the preoperative assessment in addition to a thorough history and physical examination a focused interview on the CIED that is cardiac implantable electronic devices is essential in most patients a detailed patient information card will be present detailing the type of device the model number the indication for insertion and current settings Preoperative chest radiograph can give the following information such as difference between a permanent pacemaker PPM and AICD, the number and position of the lead and the presence of a fractured lead. The right ventricle lead in an AICD has two thick opaque sections representing high voltage coils for defibrillatory shock and the coil terminates in the right ventricle. The rhythm and functioning of the CIED, that is cardiac implantable electronic devices, must be reconfirmed in the preoperative period. In most patients, this can be accomplished by accessing the results of a recent interrogation of the CIED. This is performed by trained technicians whose contact details are available with the patient or the cardiologist. Recommendations of the Heart Rhythm Society for CIED interrogation before surgery are as follows. Within 6 months for an AICD, within 12 months for a conventional PPM, and within 3 to 6 months for any CRT device. Pacing burden of more than 40% are deemed to be pacing dependent. An electrocardiogram that reveals a predominantly pace rhythm also implies pacing dependence. The ECG should be examined for P waves and pacing spikes. A pacing spike before every P wave and or a pacing spike before every QR is complex. The patient is pacemaker dependent. During preoperative evaluation, the following should be addressed. If the patient is pacing dependent and there is a potential for interaction with electromagnetic interference such as the use of electrocautery unit, then the mode of the permanent pacemaker must be changed to asynchronous mode of pacing using a programming machine and in some cases a magnet. And when the patient has an AICD that is artificial implantable cardioverter defibrillator, there is potential for generation of EMI that is electromagnetic interference, then the anti-tachycardia function of the AICD must be suspended. A reprogramming machine is used to suspend anti-tachyarrhythmia settings. It is essential to have transcutaneous pacing when the anti-tachyarrhythmia functions are disabled as the AICD will not respond when there is VT. Sometimes, a magnet is used to suspend anti-tachyarrhythmia functions of an AICD or to produce asynchronous pacing in a PPM. Now, coming to the intraoperative management, it is essential that the patient has continuous ECG and pulse oximetry monitoring and arterial pressure monitoring if indicated to give a bit-to-bit -bit display and for correlation with artifacts and electrical interference. The ECG monitor display should be selected such that the presence of pacing spikes is displayed. The filter in the ECG monitor should be set at diagnostic so that the pacing spikes can be appreciated. The effects of electrocautery unit on cardiac implantable electronic devices differ depending on whether the electrocautery unit used is monopolar or bipolar. Current flow is localized between the two poles of the bipolar cautery and usually not associated with problems. When monopolar cautery is used, the current flow is not restricted and spreads throughout the body. It is important to anesthesiologists to realize that many electrical interference such as electrocautery may be perceived by the pacemaker as intrinsic rhythm and the pulse generation may be inhibited. With ongoing electrical interference monitoring, ECG alone may not alert the anesthesiologist involved in patient care about the absence of heart rhythm. In such cases, it may be wise to monitor the pulse plethysmography from pulse oximeter or arterial waveform. So, the use of a bipolar cautery is preferred. 
the electrosurgical receiving plate must be positioned so that the current pathway does not pass through or near the pacemaker. Electrocautery burst should be limited to one second every 10 second interval. Artifacts may be picked up as QRS complexes and thus a false heart rate could be displayed. Next, it is essential to have equipment for urgent transcutaneous pacing, defibrillation or cardioversion. The transcutaneous pacing or defibrillator pads must not be placed directly over the CIED, that is cardiac implantable electronic devices. In a majority of the patients, the CIED is left-sided and the transcutaneous pacing or defibrillator pads can be positioned in an anteroposterior fashion. The cautery pad must be positioned such that the current from the electrocautery unit does not cross the CIED generator or leads. And during insertion of a central venous line, the antitachyarrhythmia function must be suspended and asynchronous mouth must be initiated. A pre-central line radiograph will help us with the position of the leads and a post-central line x-ray will help diagnose possible lead dislodgement. When it comes to anesthetic agents, anesthetic agents have no effect on the function of CIEDs in the perioperative period. However, in patients with bradycardia, avoiding high doses of fentanyl or dexmedetomidine may be prudent to prevent PPM dependence. In patients with long QT syndrome, drugs with which causes QT prolongation such as methadone, haloperidol, ondansetron, and high doses of inhalational agents are best avoided due to the theoretical risk of polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. Coming to the hemodynamic management, if the patient is pacemaker dependent and the pacemaker has been programmed to a fixed rate, it is important to realize that tachycardia will not be seen in response to hypovolemia. Therefore, careful attention to fluid replacement is essential. In the event of an arrhythmia or bradycardia, before attempting defibrillation, the magnet, if applied, should be removed to permit reactivation of anti-tachyarrhythmia function. All sources of electromagnetic interference should be discontinued to allow proper interpretation of the rhythm and appropriate therapy. Failure of the rhythm to revert after removal of the magnet will require either defibrillation or cardioversion depending on the rhythm. In the post-operative period, the rate and rhythm must be monitored continuously. The cardiac implantable electronic device must be interrogated in the immediate post-operative period. In the presence of hemodynamic instability, selection of a higher rate or a more optimal atioventricular delay may be required. Following surgery, till the device is reprogrammed to the original setting, the patient must be continuously monitored on an ECG and pulse oximity. It is essential that both transcutaneous pacing or defibrillator pads and an external defibrillator are immediately available.